lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in the business. Not because they want to do it, just because they heard it pays. And who the fuck wants to be poor knowing that's how we've been raised? Society is getting heavy, I can feel the weight. The pressure of success is like a hundred million pounds of shame. And that's the reason I'm staying up late, trying to find a way to escape. The stereotypes this day and age is making me feel like the only way I'll be happy is getting signed to a label and making money through rapping. I want to share my emotion because this world is attacking the very principle of life that lets the people be happy. If you don't have a reason to breathe, why even live? These battles cause our impressions of everything that it is. Tell them there's a reason that we're all created equal Cause some decide to be great And some decide a sequel to an average person's life Is simply what they want to be So you make your decision All I know is what I'm given Won't define the life I lead Or the way I dwell in existence I've seen a greater image on the walls of where I'm living And the words twisted and scripted Remind me of something written Faith is a gift that is given down to the people If one believes it, one receives it It's given if it is needed Don't ever think you're trapped in a life that you never wanted Your options are infinite That's some method Mathematical logic. I'm not saying I'm a prophet, I'm speaking for what it's worth. These lyrics define my prayers and these battles cause I'm a church. I'm not saying I'm a prophet, I'm speaking for what it's worth. These lyrics define my prayers. These best <laughs> Little old lady passing by. Dubonnet, a drink for little old ladies who are this little and just about this old. Old enough to share your taste for something unexpected any time of day. Like Dubonnet straight or on the rocks. Dubonnet, whenever you and your little old lady get together. Little old lady mine. Dubonnet, it all started in France. His first family. Gloria, will you hurry it up? Your father's got me in another one of his stupid arguments. Of course, when you're arguing about something stupid with somebody who's also stupid, the argument is bound to be stupid. Right, stupid? And we got a show for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All in the family. For the past three days at Dallas Braniff offices at Love Field, young stewardesses have been going through the body measuring routine, all to help airplane designers in tailoring equipment more closely to the modern woman. The government says it's spending almost $30,000 on the project. Now that's quite a figure. This is Dean Angel, Channel 8 News, on the move. Good evening. Alabama Governor George Wallace was shot and critically wounded today at a campaign rally in Laurel, Maryland. CBS News cameraman Lawrence Pierce filmed the attack. Wallace had finished speaking to the crowd of 1,000 that left the stand to shake hands with his admirers. The gunman was among them and fired at close range. From our newsroom in New York, this is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite and Roger Mudd in Washington.
Okay, well, hello everyone. I hope you enjoy those little video thingies that I do in the beginning. To me, it kind of gets me in the mood as to what was actually going on at that time. And I give you a little bit of the lighthearted with the old lady and the um, all in the family, and then went to the, the very serious items that in May of 1972, there was an attempted assassination attempt on George Wallace. Now that to me was brought home like very much what was happening because I didn't know too much about outside of the LP, what was going on. I was five years old then, right? What was going on in 1972 and in the LP news that we've been going through, we've been going through that political perspective where we've been reading about these candidates. So, you know, I've been reading about David Nolan talking about Hubert Humphrey and George Wallace, and then all of a sudden, woo, this is what you see, and that's pretty intense. And that footage at the end that didn't have any sound, it was intended not to have sound, it was some kind of home movie, that was an anti-war protest in Boulder, Colorado. And it almost looked modern, didn't it? I mean, with the type of protests that are going on now and the police firing tear gas at the crowds. I mean, all of that was very, very intense. And this is what is going on at the time that this newsletter came out. Again, May 1972. I wanted to show you, this was in the thumbnail, but you might not have noticed. So you can see here, there is the newspaper of where George Wallace was shot. And he turned out he was paralyzed and it ended his run for uh, to win the primary at that time. So he obviously dropped out after that. And that really changed the face of the 1972 uh, election. I've become so interested in the 1972 election. I just ordered a book from eBay. Um, I forgot what the, the full title was, but it's uh, actually, I guess it was a pretty popular book at the time that, that dealt with, I could look up the title of it. You know, uh, speaking of old ladies, I'm an old lady and I forget a lot of stuff. So I'll be, I'll be reading that. I thought that was uh, pretty fascinating. And also... I should have made a screen uh, capture of this, but I w actually I'll save that for a part in here because there's something else that I learned about. But before, let me see here, before we get to the actual LP news, there's a little bit of a personal note that I need to add. Uh, you may have noticed there was some like I, I, I put up a, a, almost like a disclaimer that talked about the material I used. And let me, let me explain why I did that. We are such a small party that it, it amazes me the nastiness that exists in our party. Listen, if you don't like somebody, go do something else. Don't mess with them. Don't go do something else. Well, you know, in Colorado, I have a few people here who I've been at odds with that I just try to leave alone. You know, one of them passed out a nasty flyer about me that was slanderous at convention. And, you know, this kind of stuff goes on. And it really is just so, frankly, pathetic. Well, earlier today, someone lodged an accusation at me that I was misusing my position on the historical committee to make videos that I'm, that, that I'm seeking eventually to monetize with YouTube, though the historical videos is about 25% of what I do on YouTube, but, you know, claiming all kinds of unethical things. I am ethical to a fault to a point where I actually probably harm myself on things that I just simply will not do. And I am like pretty pissed off about this accusation because everything I use and I'm going to show you is public. Anyone can do what I'm doing. 
Do you want to start a show on LP history? I encourage you to do so because more people need to learn about it and your perspective will be different than mine. But I wanted to show you something. And the person who sent this accusation cowardly didn't put their name on it, but did say they were from Colorado. I know who it is. It's, it's just absolutely ridiculous, the bullshit that goes on in this party. But since I'm sure this will now get spread around, I figured I would address it head on. There is nothing that I use that is not available to anyone else unless it's something that I purchased with my own money that's in my private collection. And I do not hoard things in my private collection. Any researcher, if they said, hey, like all these, it, the copies of Reason Magazine from the 70s, I bought all those at about $20 a pop. But if anyone said, hey, I need an article from the 1972 whatever, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Um, I can't put all that stuff up anywhere because it's copyrighted material. But where is it that I'm looking for here? Okay. Give me just one second. Because there is something I want to pull up. Now, let me find my little button here. Oh, what did I just do? Okay. All right, so if you look here on the screen, this is Elpedia. And I pulled up the LP News section on Elpedia. And I will end up scrolling down, but as you can see, there starts with 1971 and it goes forward. These issues have been up about two years now. This is the material I use. Material that I made sure was available to everyone. And, but for the efforts of the historical committee, this stuff wouldn't have been seen. These old LP news were just languishing in a file drawer. But for instance, let's go here to, let me uh, get my mouse to where it needs to be, to 1972. So here's the, uh, the, uh, the ones we're going through right now. So here is the one we're going to be doing today. Anyone can do this. And if you want to, knock yourself out. That's why I made all the LP News available. Going through LP News, which is a public publication that went out to the entire party and that I made sure is available to everyone now, despite the fact of it being 50 years old, is using publicly available material. I just cannot believe how nasty and slanderous some people are. You know, and I got one thing to say to nasty and slanderous people. That's what I have to say. I have spent thousands of dollars of my own money acquiring things for my own collection in order to teach people about party history. I have put in probably 2,000 of hours of my own time into this project. The party couldn't afford me if they had to pay me. Other volunteers have as well. And then you just have nasty people with personal grudges that have to spread slander about people. You live sad, little, pathetic lives, whoever you are doing things like this. And I wish I could pity you. But pity's too good. All right. Now that I've set the record straight on that, I hope, and said how I really feel, let's get back to the program. Let me close this out. One second. It's weird because I'm seeing it on my screen and then on my laptop. So here we go. So now I've closed that out. Now you're seeing half of my face. Okay, let's go back to the main camera here. And I need to close out this picture and picture. I do not know how that happened. I don't know how to get rid of it. Move. How do I get rid of it? Okay, let me try something here. Give me a moment. As you know, this program every day is keeping me humble. Okay, there is a new scene. Let me put the camera. There we go. I fixed it. So if you see some trifling bitch going around, and I use that term generically. I don't use it gendered. A trifling bitch can be a man or a woman. Um, going around saying this shit, 
now you know the answer. Everything I do is publicly available. <sighs> I made sure of that. Anyway, yeah, it does, it does perturb me that people have to be so petty. <sighs> okay, so I showed you that newspaper, um, and I think that's it that I had to show you before we got started into the LP news. So let's pull that up right here. Okie dokie. So as usual, we're going to go through it. I've got all kinds of things for you. I've got a copy here and you've got the copy up there. And of course I showed you where you can find all of this on Elpedia. Please go to Elpedia. There is all kinds of things there. And really, I hope some of you get a fire under your rear for history and you also start doing presentations. Please, please do it. And if you can become a speaker somewhere and make some money at it, more power to you. But by the way, my YouTube channel isn't monetized. Hopefully, I hope one day it will be. But let me tell you, just to spite gossipy people, I'll unmonetize any of these LP history videos because I do it for the love of it. The rest of my channel is my own political commentary. It's just petty people. Our movement will never grow if we're so small that we attack each other rather than just ignoring people we don't, we don't like. All righty. So membership passes 600, 12 states organized or organizing LP now second largest organization in quote unquote movement. All righty. I count on you guys. I, I am seeing the comments, by the way. Hi, Rhett. Hi, Michael. And if ever the sound levels aren't good, I count on you guys to let me know that. I moved my mic again. It's up here. <laughs> So I'm not sure how the sound is doing. All righty. In only five and a half months, the Libertarian Party has grown from less than 50 members to over 600. This growth rate is virtually unprecedented in the history of the Libertarian movement. We're now tied with NRC. I have no idea what NRC is. Usually somebody in chat helps me out with these abbreviations and I rack my brain trying to figure out what NRC is. Is I'm like guessing is C for caucus. I, I have no idea, no idea what NRC is. So if anyone out there knows, thank you, Michael. I watched a bunch of videos on how to make sure the blue Yeti, that's what I've got, um, that I had the settings right and I had them wrong last time. So I, I messed around with it. So wh whatever the NRC is, which I'm, I'm like so curious as to what that is. So whoever the NRC is, they're tied at this point with the LP for top two in terms of membership. Despite having been in existence less than half as long and are surpassed only by SIL, which is the Society for Individual Liberty, which was founded three and a half years ago as SRI. I do not know what they, what SIL used to be called, which was SRI. I'm assuming the S is still, um, society and I was individual, I think. I don't know what, I'm curious as to what SIL used to be. Alrighty. In the last 30 days, our growth slowed to 30% per month. Wouldn't you love it if we were growing 30% per month now? But we are nonetheless confident that we will be well past the 1,000 mark by June 15th for two reasons. And the reason June was so important to them, which is the next month, is they had the first convention in June. Exciting, right? For, okay, so I'm continuing. I, I, I got off on. Oh, but speaking of that, let me sidetrack one second here. So speaking of the first convention that was going to happen in June, I was going through my copies of Reason and I found this. Let me see here. Check this out. 
there's an ad that was in I believe it was the February 1972 Reason magazine and as you can see this is an ad for the convention so I have to look up here on the screen. I, I didn't put the copy in front of me. So it's talking about, you know, selecting the candidates and all the fun they're going to have, blah, blah, blah. But I, I, I love the, uh, the, the fake ballot they have up there where they have the shoot and loot party. <laughs> so that is so neat to see this advertisement for the very first convention. So I did want to show that to you guys. Okay. Oh, I needed to go back to the LP news. Alrighty. I am getting better at this program though. It is not completely without hiccups, but I am getting much smoother. Alrighty. Where was I on here? Okay. First, we have a large display ad slightly over one fourth page appearing in the May 20th issue of human events which we are confident will bring in over 200 new members. If you listen to the last episode where we were doing April of 1972, they were raising money for this ad. Now, I did all kinds of searches last night because I haven't been to sleep yet <laughs> since last night because I was preparing this episode for you guys. Um, I tried to find somewhere I could buy that issue of human events can't find it anywhere but i did put in some wants for it at various search, search sites so if i could ever get my hands on that i will get it so i can show you guys the ad and so continuing and second we have a mailing going out to twenty thousand people this week thanks to ed butler former editor of square magazine and this should bring in at least another 200 members added to the members which will be generated by our ads in the may issues of individualist reason win and unbound i don't think i looked in the may edition of reason to see what the ad was but we have my reason book right here so let me look at may and see if we can find the advertisement. If you want to bear with me one moment, here's the cover. If you're interested, it's got like finger, like, I don't know, probably some main article in there. And the title says, uh, the public interest fact or fraud. So let's see if we can, oh, here we go. Here's the ad that didn't take long to find. I'll hold this up to the camera. This is also for the convention, but it's different from the one I had already shown you. So it basically says, attend the first national conference of libertarian political activists, Denver, Colorado, June 15th through 18th. So that is why some of my magazines fell out here. That is why um, some of those, that, that June 15th date was really important to them that back down all right so getting back to our episode now i did do searches as well for may issue of the individualist when and unbound i had never heard of when and unbound before i didn't know if they meant cato unbound because that's something but it doesn't seem that way i wasn't able to find anything of a magazine type that was called Unbound. So that's still a mystery. But when is super, super cool. When was called, um, I think, when Peace and Freedom or something. It's a magazine and I had never heard of it. It seems like, you know, a, a libertarian magazine. Now I wasn't able to find the May issue or was I? No, I don't think I was able to find the May issue, but I found another one from 1972. And I really, really should pull this up. Um, I think I'm going to. Give me one 
one second here. If, if I can find this, you will think this is so cool. I don't know why I didn't think to make a little screen of this. But I found it on Abe Books. And there was, there was stuff going on in 1972, man. Let me just put in my password for Abe Books. See if I can pull up my order. Give me one moment here. It's slow pokey. Okay, let's see. Yeah, win peace and freedom through nonviolent action. Oh, it doesn't show the cover. Oh, man, I wish it did of the one I bought. Well, let me read for you. I'll, I'll I'll pull this I'll pull this up. Let me do a screen share here if I can. Screen share. No, I don't want to do it here because that will interfere. Let let me uh, open a new screen here. Okay, now do a screen share. Okay, so this is what I just ordered. It was in the wee hours um, of the morning. So you can see I ended up paying $15.59. That's about what I pay between that and 20 bucks per pop of my, this is mine, my own money um, for research material for you guys. So it was March of 72 that I found, but this is why I got it. A, because this magazine seems great, but read this description here. This issue with complete collection of political documents ripped off from the FBI office in Media, Pennsylvania in March of 1971. This magazine was one of the recipient of copies of the material ripped off. Betty Metzger wrote The Burglary, a book on the break-in. I ordered The Burglary. Because I'm just like, what the heck happened in March of 71? Apparently, you know, uh, J. Edgar Hoover, you know, famous for his shenanigans with keeping records on Americans and the, you know, we all hear about Hoover's FBI. Apparently someone broke in and like stole like a bunch of records of, that they were keeping about political movements. So I'm just dying to learn about this. I had never heard this before, so that's why I ordered the March 1972 issue of Win, even though it's not the one that mentions the LP, because I was like, wow, I have to learn about this. So, um, and you can see it here, here's where I found also key influences in the right, which we dealt with last time. You can see I bought that right there from... Uh, Abe Books. You can tell I'm always buying research I got here. Primary screen out a decade in the Libertarian Party. And uh, parliamentary questions and answers. It's, I live for the freaking LP, man. Okay, so yeah. Alrighty, I just thought that was so freaking cool. And I'll let you know what I learn about that. Alrighty, back to the episode or the uh, issue. Okay, so when and unbound and those joining as a result of the recruiting efforts by present members, these two large influxes should result in an increase in membership of more than 100% by the time of next month's conference. LP groups are now organizing in 12 states. A particular interest are the efforts in the following states. Now, hopefully there's some folks listening that um, are involved with these states. All righty. The California LP now has over 100 dues-paying members and a mailing list of nearly 300 people who have shown interest in the party. Under the leadership of John Taylor, who was the first chair of the California LP, um, California Libertarians have set up a series of organizing meetings. John Hospers, author of the widely acclaimed book Libertarianism, is scheduled to address 
the party's Southern California Conference on May 20th. Plans are underway to charter a bus to bring an estimated 50 people to the first national conference in June. So I wonder if that, that happened. New York. Membership in the Empire State is now 60 and growing rapidly. A mailing has been sent to 1,000 New York City uh, libertarians urging them to attend a meeting on May 21st. Other meetings have been set up for May 14th, Brooklyn, May 17th, Manhattan. Speakers at these meetings will include Gary Greenberg, David Friedman, and New York State Chairman Ed Clark. And I believe that is the Ed Clark who, who ended up running uh, for, our, for president on one of our tickets. The New York LP has formally endorsed party member Guy Riggs of Poughkeepsie in his campaign for election to the state assembly and also plans to run somebody for Congress in the 17th Congressional District, John Lindsay's old stamping, stamping ground? It's a stamping ground. It should be stomping ground. I'm finding all kinds of typos in uh, these old LPs. LP News, I mean. All right, Texas. The Texas LP is off to a flying start with approximately 30 members. Their first organizing meeting was held April 9th, and local representatives were chosen to get things going in the major cities throughout the state. Keith Jones was selected to continue as temporary chairman, and he was the first permanent chairman, I believe, of the Texas LP. Just published by the Texas LP is the first issue of an exceptionally professional looking newsletter, Renaissance News. We do not have a copy of that newsletter. On Elpedia, there is one copy of Renaissance News that is up there, and I think it's from the mid 1970s. Typography was contributed by party members Mary and Scott Tips of Houston. Another TLP member, Linda Kenner, has donated some attractive posters. Here's where it gets interesting. Oh, I wanted to, I'm reading and you guys don't have it up on the screen. Let me uh, get that back up on the screen for you. One second. All right, here we go. So talking, okay. Uh, so has donated some attractive posters featuring the American flag. And here, here we go. And the slogan, don't let anyone tell you that we were not founded as a freaking capitalist party. Okay. And the slogan, capitalism the American ideal for fundraising purposes. And then it gives information on where you could order this, which is no good anymore, but we were thoroughly capitalist. Colorado state chairman, Luke Zell. He is the guy whose living room that the party was, had his organizing papers signed at the Colorado Springs location. That was Luke Zell's home held an organizing meeting in Colorado Springs on April 26, and about 20 people showed up despite a blizzard. Yes, a blizzard. We have funny weather out here. Colorado membership is about 30 altogether. Tentative plans are being laid to run National LP Vice Chairman Pip Boyles for Congress. Pip was also in Colorado at that time and was a founding member. Oklahoma. Another fast growing group is the Oklahoma LP. With about 30 members to date, the Oklahoma crew is engaged in a membership drive and is working on raising funds to pay for a billboard promoting the LP during the coming campaign. I wonder if they, they got that. Oklahoma LP chairman, Frank Robinson. We know D Frank, woo woo, D Frank. Man, you are the OG, you are the OG. That's all I can say. Uh, Oklahoma LP chairman Frank Robinson, Tim Barris, and Ron Harris came up to national headquarters on April 29th for a day-long planning session and left with a lot of ideas and material. D. Frank, do you remember that? I want to know, do you remember that? I want you to come on here and tell me all about it. Illinois. Running a bit behind the Big Five, but coming on strong is the Illinois LP. They've had two organizing meetings and have 20 members so far, a number which they expect to double within the month. Mailings are being, I always trip over my own tongue. 
Mailings are being sent to over 500 Illinois Libertarians, and further meetings are scheduled for May 21st and June 4th at the home of State LP Chairman Alan Newman. In addition to laying plans for organizational efforts, Illinois LP members are working on suggested platform changes to be presented at the National Conference. Winston Duke is leading the discussions. Now, as these are saying who the initial chairman are, I am going into Elpedia and, and making sure that the articles for these LPs mention who the first chairman were. So what I do, just so you know, after each of these episodes, I actually go in, there's a PDF of all of these newsletters in Elpedia, but I actually go in and hand type them all out. Um, so I could hot link things in here and I make articles on the new information we learned. So a, a great deal of time go, goes into this. Um, and remember, anyone, please sign up for Elpedia. Massachusetts. After a slow start, the Massachusetts LP has gotten off the ground under the leadership of Paul Siegler. A press conference announcing their plans and a state convention are planned for the next few weeks. The Massachusetts LP intends to support two candidates for office this year. Avi Nelson. I think Avi. No, I was thinking of Ari. He was somebody in Colorado. Avi Nelson, an objectivist-oriented Republican running for Congress in the 4th District. And George Samaripa continued on page 2. Let me go here to page 2 for you guys. There we go. An anti-war Freedmanite Democrat who has joined the LP and is seeking the Democratic senatorial nomination to run against super statist <laughs> Republican Edward Brook. Nelson's campaign headquarters, and it gives an address, XCOM member Mark Frazier, and Mark, I believe, is still around. That name, I'm getting a lot of names jumbled in my head, has produced an excellent brochure for the party and will make copies for other state LP groups. Wish I had a copy of that brochure. Y'all in chat, when I get done with these states, remind me there's something really cool I want to share with you. And I don't want to interrupt talking about the states to do it, but I don't want to forget. Please, please don't let me forget. And thank you, Tyler Rowe. Thank you for um, the thanks. It's nice to be appreciated. Uh, Georgia. I just organized this month. The Georgia LP already has about 20 members and will be presenting a workshop at the Southern Society for Individual Liberty Conference in Atlanta. Like Massachusetts and Colorado, the Georgia LP has printed up its own brochures and is working on bumper stickers. And he put bumper stickers as one word. So the Georgia chairman was Pasquale Giordano. I like saying the names to see if anyone knows these folks. Michigan, currently numbering about 20. If you notice, most of the state parties are between 20 and 30 within a month of organizing. The Michigan LP is expected to grow rapidly in the next two weeks. Peter McAlpine is holding an open house for Michigan Libertarians on May 20th, which has been widely publicized via mailings and notices and reason and ASA. I didn't see any notices. I'm going to need to go through the classifieds. I won't bore you guys with that now, but if I find them, I'll add it in a bonus episode. I didn't even notice that when I was reading through this to get ready for the episode. New Jersey. Another brand new organization, the New Jersey LP, is still in its embryonic stages with about 12 members. New Jersey has its state elections in 1973, and the New Jersey party plans to concentrate its efforts on preparing for next year, according to their spokesman, Fred Stein. Utah. Now, here's somebody everyone knows. State chairman and, na and national executive committee member Carl Bray has a has scheduled meetings with two libertarian groups in Utah this month 
and expects to have 20 members by the time this newsletter is published. Carl has also been promoting the LP on his radio show. Connecticut, that's where I was born. State Chairman Charles Curley of the Committee to Legalize Gold fame is working with a dozen nutmeg state libertarians to get things going. A press conference is planned for July and the Connecticut LP expects to be working closely with that state's conservative party. And that's capitalized, meaning that that's an actual party, I guess, at the time in Connecticut called the conservative party. All right. I promised you I was going to tell you something else after the states. You didn't need to remind me. So we read um, last month and the month before and someone in chat I can't remember who I'm so sorry um I had it, it, it mentioned that the UPI ran either an article or an interview yeah ran an interview with David Nolan and I didn't know what UPI was excuse me man I drink too much soda on these things and it was like the uni it, it was kind of like the um, AP, like the Associated Press, but it was a different one. It was Universal Press something. So I went to the UPI site to search their archives to see if I could find this interview with David Nolan, but their archives only went back like 15 years. So I wrote UPI and I said, hey, I'm looking for this and they sent it to me. So I have this 1972 interview with David Nolan that I got from UPI. I'm working on getting reprint permission from them to include it on Lpedia. but in either event, I'll read it to you guys um, in a bonus episode. So it's really, it's really good. Very short, but really good. And what I really liked about it, anyone who was watching my um, show a couple nights ago where I was talking about this new political party that's starting a bunch of socialists. But I had talked about why I think we haven't gotten farther in 50 years. And it's because, you know, most libertarians would rather pee their pants than say an actual libertarian thing. Well, David Nolan was saying a bunch of actual libertarian things and he wasn't peeing his pants neither. All righty. So next column up at the top there. Everybody's talking about the LP. The April issue of Outlook, the sprightly new journal of the Abolitionist Association, features a pair of editorials, pro and con, on the Libertarian Party. As you know, I went and tried to find this. I wanted to buy a copy. I can't find this copy of Outlook anywhere, but I did, again, put in some searches for it. Hopefully, it will turn up one day because I would love to read this pair of editorials. Taking the affirmative are Ralph Fuchitola and Jerry Tusiel. Jerry Tusiel normally goes by Jerome. He ended up running multiple times. I think he ran for governor of New York a few years after this. There's an article about it on Elpedia with John Brotskjol on the attack. Both editorials are well written, although we wish our opponents would stop quoting our December membership figure as if it were current. If you haven't glommed onto, I'm going to use glommed, I love it, a copy of Outlook yet, it says where to, uh, where to request it. All righty, the May issue of Reason features an outstanding article by LPXCOM member Mike Holmes entitled The Idea of a Libertarian Party. And I do have that. We'll be going over that in a bonus episode, but I wanted to show you the, just like what it looked like. Huh, it's not coming up. There we go. So this is what was in Reason the idea of a libertarian party. Now, Mike Holmes is still around. He writes me maybe once a quarter, I hear from him. He's not really involved with the LP anymore, but he is still very much into following what we're doing. 
Um, he got soured on the LP. I, I don't, he's kind he, well, he can be a bit cantankerous. I haven't figured out yet really what his issues were, but he's still around and, uh, still very much involved in politics. It says Mike's article also appears in the just released libertarian handbook which is an incredible bargain at two dollars now that there's an ad for the libertarian handbook i want to show you guys right there libertarian handbook 1973 there's also a libertarian handbook 1971 and 1974 now i'm really bummed right now because i have all of these handbooks these are things once again that i bought with my own money but I can't figure out where I put them. <laughs> They're around my house somewhere. And I just don't know where they are because I wanted to do a bonus episode on this handbook and it'll turn up. I actually have two of them. It'll turn up, but uh, yeah, I can't find it right now. I tore my house upside down looking for it. And I even went down the storage in case I accidentally put my stuff in with the, the party stuff. But no, it's not there either. It, it's here in my house somewhere. So this 104 page guide to the movement tells you everything you always wanted to know about libertarianism and maybe even some things you didn't want to know. That cover that they're showing on there, if I remember correctly, I probably have a photograph of this. I did a video on it on my Facebook page a long time ago when I first got it. The, um, that cover, I don't think is the way the cover actually looks. There's, there's more symbols all over the cover, including, and, but maybe I'm thinking of the 1971 handbook, an anarchy symbol, which just goes to show that anarchism was always very closely tied with the libertarian movement, that it was part of the libertarian movement. I don't think any of the covers were that plain, but I could be wrong. All right, let me uh, go back to my main camera. All righty. We've also gotten write-ups in the Stars and Stripes, National Review, and even the JBS Bulletin. Not all favorable, but you can't win them all. Like I've said with everything else that's been mentioned in this uh the show, I went looking for these magazines to purchase them and no luck, but I put in search requests for them. So if they ever turn up and they're a reasonable price, I will pick them up. Like for instance, that Win magazine, I did find a collection that had the May 72, but it was a collection of 19 of them and they wanted like 300 or 400 bucks for it or something. No, I, I'd be broke. I, I can't afford that. So yeah, if it's reasonable, I pick them up. Robert Lefebvre, the movement's leading advocate of copping out. You'll see as these LP news go on, they have David Nolan snipes at Lefebvre. And I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. A lot in here, uh, has attacked us. SIL News, which is uh, the Society for Individual Liberty News, and A is A, which is an objectivist newsletter, and I haven't been able to find that either, have both carried several items. Even the new banner, South Carolina's answer to the match, recently ran a big front page story on our reply to Murray Rothbard's comments in the Libertarian Forum. I also tried to find that and haven't. What I haven't done yet is because I believe everything from the Libertarian Forum is online. So I haven't tried to find these comments by Murray Rothbard that they're referring to. And to be honest with you, the reason I didn't is because A, the Libertarian Forum is pretty much all just Murray Rothbard's comments. And if you know anything about Murray Rothbard, he makes a lot of comments. I have a feeling tracking down what comments are being referred to here is going to be nigh impossible because it's just so general and Rothbard was freaking prolific, just crazy pro prolific. 
So whatever else you can say about us, you can't say we're being ignored. And this is just the beginning. Formula for success, a member a month. Okay. And then I don't know why they put a quote from Machiavelli's The Prince in here. That just kind of gives me the, you know, want to throw up. But here's the quote from The Prince. There is nothing more difficult to take in hand more perilous to conduct or more uncertain for in its success than to take the lead in the introduction of a new order of things. I mean, it's a, it's a decent quote, but you know, Machiavelli really. Okay. I'm loading up on the caffeine because again, I didn't sleep last night because I was getting this show ready for you guys. And I had an outreach booth to do today. Directory update. Uh, I'm just going to read through the names quickly, the uh, people they added to the official organization. So for Region 7, they added Eric Scott Royce. For Georgia, that the, the first chair, which is Pasquale Giordano. Massachusetts, their first chair, Paul Siegler. New Jersey, their first chair, Fred Stein. And it said to delete... Bruce Jones from Wyoming. That Coke is so fizzy. I'm sorry. And new addresses for John Taylor for Region 1. And uh, Charles Curley, who looks like the chair of the LP of Connecticut. And Keith Jones, who is the chair of Texas. Oh, and you see, you guys didn't tell me I didn't pull up the LP news so that you could read along with me. Here we go. All right, so the next page is the political perspective. We always do that, and it's a separate show because it, it's going outside the LP to talk about what's going on in the race. So that will be a bonus episode. So we will skip that, but let's just look at the title is part four, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. And it's basically talking about, mostly about the Democratic primaries. Okay, and the last page is always that section called Bits and Pieces. So here we go. Deadline for $5 discount on conference registration approaching. If you're planning on attending the first national conference of libertarian political activists, we urge you to get your registration in soon for two reasons. First, because you saved $5. And second, because the Radisson Hotel, so now we know where the location is. For some reason, I thought it was at the Brown Palace, but I don't know. D. Frank is going to have to give me info on that. Is holding a block of 100 rooms, but only until May 31st. Don't miss the boat. Send in your registration today. Platform committee list available June 1st. Anyone who would like to send material to the members of the platform committee in order to let them study it before the committee convenes on June 15th may obtain a list of these individuals and their addresses by sending a postcard or letter to National HQ. I wish I had those, these lists of people. Maybe somewhere it's listed. Um, What's interesting you'll note here, though, is that the committee was going to convene on June 15th. So they didn't meet ahead of time. I'm sure they talked and probably exchanged some snail mail, but they didn't actually meet until actually at the convention. And that's the way platform committees used to be. Continuing. Or if you're not coming to the conference but have some ideas you'd like to have the platform committee consider, you can send a letter outlining your views to Platform Committee Chairman Pip Bowles, and it gives his uh, P.O. box in Colorado Springs. Ah, here's, this is good. This is good what's coming up. We're going to have all kinds of bonus episodes leading out of here. But Political Action Manual. And let me show you guys the title of the, the front page of this. Or the cover, at least. There we go. Um, I have this. I have it scanned. Um, so it's available for everybody. We're not going to go through it now, but I just did want to show you what it looked like. And we can 
kind of thumb through it a little bit here. So let's see, I'm not sure how many pages it is, and it doesn't say here, but you can see David Nolan wrote it, and here he has various tips and things for political action in 1972. So yeah, it looks like it's pretty good. So we're going to do a bonus episode on this political action manual. And again, you can find this at Elpedia as well if you'd like to read it on your own, because we're obviously not going to read it in full in any episode. Okay, so political action manual. All members of the National LP are receiving a copy of our new political action manual with this newsletter. Any comments would be welcomed and we'd appreciate your telling us if you spot any typos so we can correct them in the second edition. Now that you have the manual because it went out with this newsletter, you've got no excuse for holding back on organizing. So get going. I'm curious though if the manual that I have a copy of is the first edition because he mentioned other editions. So let me page back to the beginning here. Let's see. If it has, if it says what edition it is on here, I'd be very curious. I hope it's the first edition. It's not paging very quickly. Just one second here. have went so much forward. So page seven, page five, we're getting there slowly but surely. Don't call me Shirley. Okay. One second. First print. Nope, it's the second printing. So I do not have the April one. What this is, is the November one. So I'll be on the hunt for the April one, I might go do some searches for it. I didn't even think to look at this earlier. Okay, so there should be no typos in that one. Alrighty. Now, what's interesting about the political action manual is this is something that was put out by the LP, updated routinely. There are a bunch of political action manuals. I mean, I've probably seen like 50 of them that used to get put out very, very regularly by the LP. And that was started right in the beginning by David Nolan. Project of the month. Enclosed, you will find five postcard announcements of the conference. Do not have those. None of these newsletters came with the attachments. Sometimes I happen to find what turns out to be the attachment elsewhere, but not this. Please take a few minutes to address these to five libertarians and mail them off today. Needed, an Ohio chairman. LP organizations are now going in every state. Let me go back here. Okay. We have about 20 prospective, 20 members and prospective members there, but nobody has stepped forward to get things off the ground. Any volunteers? Tim Barris is LP's first life sustaining member. Now, I believe in the very first issue, and I did that episode last year. It talked about what the various membership levels meant because they're different than they are now. Because we had they had life members and life sustaining members, and I don't remember what the difference is. Um, they've already had multiple life members, but this gentleman is the first life sustaining member, so that's interesting. So while visiting LPHQ last month, and remember LPHQ is David Nolan's living room in his villa in Westminster, Tim Barris of Oklahoma decided to become the LP's first life sustaining member. We are honored that Tim, who is by no means wealthy, thought enough of our efforts to make such a substantial investment. Do we hear a second? <laughs> 
So May 15th to June 15th designated. Now it was designated Women's Lib Month because Women's Lib was a big thing then, but they put in parentheses Women's Liberta Liber Libertarian Month. Let you guys didn't tell me I got to put it back up on the screen for you. Okay. Now here's you all are going to laugh. You all are going to laugh because the LP was a sausage vest back then, even as it is now. While we're more than pleased at our growth to date, there's one area where things haven't been going as well as they should. For some reason, only <laughs> for some reason, can't figure out why, uh, one, only one sixth of our members are female. This may just reflect the general makeup of the movement. And that is in fact what it is. Libertarianism is just, is something that more men get into for whatever reason. But we'd like to bring things into a closer balance, especially because we want to have women represented more equitably at the conference next month. For this reason, we urge every LP member to make a special effort to recruit at least one woman into the party in the next few weeks. So that had been a focus right from the beginning. Next, we still need that record. You remember last show um, I played and got copyright uh, struck for, so I had to re-upload the video without the song. Um, we played 1984 by Spirit because obviously David Nolan like carried a torch for this song because he was asking people if they could find this single for him because he couldn't find it in Denver. So despite our notice last month, nobody has come up with a copy of the record 1984 by Spirit. So we're raising the amount we're offering to $3. Surely someone has or can locate a copy of this record, which is probably the most powerful anti-statist recording of the last few years. It is a pretty groovy song. If I, I like it. I, I bought a, a copy of it from iTunes and it's now on regular rotation on my playlist. A note of thanks to the many LP members who contributed to our ad in human events with special thanks to Ann Clark of Massachusetts, Shirley and Pasquale Giordano of Georgia, Ron Hartzog of New York, Dean Lansing of Colorado, and Ardell and Marion Taylor of Montana for their especially generous contributions. Unsung heroes of the day. Crap, there's a picture I should have put up here. Um, I wonder if it's on Elpedia. If you guys will give me a second here. And you're awful quiet. Normally there is just like all kinds of comments and stuff, but maybe I did this too late on a Saturday. But I want to see if I can find this. You guys will enjoy this picture if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Okay, let me save that to my desktop. And I'll pull it up in a screen here. So after we read this section, I will, um, I'll pull, put this picture up on the screen so you guys could see it. It, it means a, a lot to me. Where did I save it though? Did I save it to downloads? One second. I saved it and now I can't find it. Where did I save this puppy? I might have to pull it up again. Oh no, there it is. Okay. So unsung heroes of the party. Thanks are also due to LP vice chairman Pip Boyles for his many hours of work on legal and financial aspects of party organization and to national secretary, Susan Nolan, the first party secretary at that time before the convention, then she ended up being the first chair whose office management experience has justly earned the LP, the reputation of the most efficient outfit in the libertarian movement. More than any other individuals, Pip and Sue are responsible for the party's efficacy. Now, Susan Nolan, obviously that was David's wife at the time. Um, they ended up getting divorced some time later. And when David passed away, he was um, married to Elizabeth. 
who I've had the pleasure of meeting. She's a wonderful lady. Now, when David and Susan were divorced, apparently Susan dropped out of sight and no one really knew what happened to her. Like they didn't even know if she was, you know, still in, still a libertarian, whatever, like nobody knew hide nor hair of her. And that just always both bothered and puzzled me. Oh, look, it's pulling up my, my desktop. Good thing I don't got any porn on there, right? Okay, uh, let me now go back here and pull up this. I want to show you this picture. Okay. Obviously, that's me on one side. There is Susan Nolan. Susan, um, it turns out, never left Denver. She's in the same home that she shared at one point with David um, in downtown Denver. So she never went anywhere. And that was such a sweet meeting. I really, really, it was really um, special. Who also was there and who took the picture was Dr. Joe Bookman, who was the chair of the um, Ohio, uh, not Ohio, excuse me, Utah LP. I got distracted because I'm like, oh, that's a cute top. What happened to that top? And I remember that's when I was doing Rent the Runway and that was a rental top actually, but it's really cute. I wish I still had that top. But unfortunately, when we met with Susan, she has dementia, uh, she has Alzheimer's, and she really went in and out of lucidity. But for the times when she did give us some information, it was super, super cool to, um, to meet her and realize she has always been there and to like dig up this, this, piece, of, this piece of history. And Dr. Bookman's the one who set up this meeting. So all credit goes to him for that. All right. So let's go back to the LP news. And I don't want my desktop being shown here. So here we go. Libertarians in Europe. An organization of American libertarians in Europe is being formed. Caliber, Council of American Libertarians and Individualists based in Europe. It is anticipated that most of the membership will be servicemen, students, and businessmen. Caliber will try to provide a means of communication for those libertarians through an occasional newsletter and social meetings. And then it gives an address. I'll have to end up doing an article on Caliber for Elpedia. One last thing to show you says here, laissez-faire buttons available. We, and I have, I have this button, so that's nice. So let me pull that up for you. There we go. There's the laissez-faire button that is being referred to. We do have this button. This is actually was in the personal collection of James Golston. We have on hand about 300 buttons and 1,500 stickers and printed with the words laissez-faire, which of course is short for laissez-faire, capitalism, and a liver sign emblem. The buttons are one and one quarter in size and the stickers are two inches square with peel off backing. We don't have the stickers, but we do have the button. While they last, you can have the buttons, five for $1, 12 for $2, 20 for $3, 50 for $6. Wow, that's a good price. <laughs> Or a hundred for ten dollars. Stickers are two two cents each. Minimum order fifty. Make checks payable to the party. Okay, so that is all we're doing for this episode or this show. Um, we will we'll have at least one bonus episode, but I anticipate it'll be two, but maybe just one. We're, we'll have that interview that I found with David Nolan from the UPI, and we'll go through some of the political action manual. And I think that was, oh, right, there will be two because there was that article that Mike Holmes wrote, the idea, let me see if I can find that, the idea of the Libertarian um, Party, this one here. Yeah, we'll go through this article. So there'll be at least two oh no and oh 
<laughs> See, things slip my mind. Plus, we also need to do the, let's go back a page here. We always do a bonus on the political perspective. So there'll be at least three bonus episodes. The next one will be always we do the political perspective and then we'll do some of the others. So there's a lot to catch up with with May 1972. I remind you guys that what my goal is here, the original plan, I started doing these last a year ago. In fact, exactly, almost exactly a year ago this month. It was actually December of last year. I started doing these shows and the idea was I would do one month for that corresponds to the month we are in. So I did December 71 in December, then, you know, January 72, on and on. Then COVID hit and all hell broke loose. You guys know the way the battles I had to fight to have a convention, meaning a real convention, in-person convention, and all of that. And that consumed all of my time in my life, plus everything going on with COVID. So that got dropped. That's why we're doing May, even though it's November. My goal is by the end of this year to catch up so that we start 2021, starting with January 1973. But as you can see, there's so much material that that might be a bit ambitious because each month has all these bonus episodes too. And next month, June of 72, is the first convention. And I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about there. So I don't know. Um, I, I have to do what June, July, August, September, October, November, December. I have to do seven in the remaining time of this year. I don't know, but I'll try. I'll try my best. It, it, preparing for these really, really does take a great deal of time. But I think that is it for this one. I am freaking exhausted. I have to sleep tonight. <laughs> like, if you look, you could see, look at those dark circles, man. I am so tired. Oh my God, I look like shit. Put those glasses back on, girl. You're going to scare people. All righty. So we're going to do the closing here. Okay, so here's my pitch in my closing. Please, please, it, if you haven't watched this on YouTube, watching on YouTube really helps me because I'm trying to get a minimum number of watch hours. And if you go to YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, like, and share the video. Even if you don't share it, subscribe and like. Why does that help? It helps the engagement and the video will be recommended to more people if there's engagement on it and maybe we can get other people interested in party history maybe interested in the party itself and we can find our next you know activists um through through this work also i know everyone's hurting with covid i mean we're hurting bad here in my household but if you can if you enjoy the work that is put in i do ask for voluntary support and libertarians that's what we believe in um, you can do it for as little as a dollar a month. Of course, it, it goes up to whatever you would like to do, but I mean, the minimum is a dollar. And I think most people can afford that, but maybe some can't. I mean, no judgment. So if you can, please, please consider going to uh, patreon.com forward slash pink flame of liberty or subscribestar.com pink hyphen flame hyphen of hyphen liberty. Or you can do a one-time thingy at my PayPal thing. That's all I'm going to bug you about with that. I appreciate it if you can, but even, you know, you can't, please at least subscribe and like. And in the show notes in YouTube, there is an Amazon link. That's for the Amazon affiliate program. What you need to know about the affiliate program is you don't have to buy the item that's linked. I put kind of a humorous item to link. If you are ever going to buy anything at Amazon, start with that link and then do your purchase from there because Amazon puts a cookie 
for your session and anything you buy in that session, whether it's something I recommended or not, gets credited to my affiliate account. So that's a way you can support without costing you a thing if you are already going to be shopping at Amazon. Okay, that is it. We will um, head on out. Thank you so much. Have an awesome evening. Mi guapas de libertad. Gotta take what you're given, that's how we live it Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians